Hi you guys, today we're going to be talking about character arrays. Um, we've talked about integer arrays before, but character arrays are kind of different. And can be used differently than you might expect. Um, so let's go ahead and declare an array. I'm going to make it of seven characters. And we'll set that equal to just an array of single characters, like, you know, the same way that we made um, an integer array of just uh, integers. Um, we're making a character array of characters. And then the, the neat thing about character arrays is that we can't actually see out them. Now, you might be expecting this to see out... Um, your name is, and then some garbled address, it's not going to mean anything, because that's what you would expect from working with integer arrays. But, you'll see, it actually outputs the, the characters in that array, instead of um, the address. And the way that that works is, well first I'll talk about why I have a 7 here instead of 6. You notice that Duncan only has six letters in it, so why did I make the array um, to hold seven characters? And that's because whenever you have an array of characters, you need to leave space for all of the characters in your text, and then one more because you need a null character at the end. Now the null character, all that does is it tells the compiler when the when the uh, when the array is finished. It's the it's always the last character in the array, and it tells see out when to stop outputting. And by that I mean that the name of the array is still a pointer to the first element in the array. But see out sees that this is a character array. And so because it's a character array, it starts at the first element in the array and then proceeds down uh, the, the subsequent addresses. And then once it reaches a null character, it's like, okay, I'm done working with this array because I know the null character told me that it was finished. So that's why the null character is necessary. And that's how Cout can output character arrays. Um, so another thing about character arrays is that instead of initializing them like this huge uh, m several single characters, you can use something called a string literal. And we've already seen seen string literals before. All they look like is this. They're in double quotes, and they have text in between the quotes. So like this is a string literal, and this is a string literal. So we've already been using them. But you can also use them when assigning them into arrays. You'll still need to leave room for the null character, um, because that's technically part of every string literal. There is a null character at the end. You just don't see it, because you don't type it. But it is there. So this will still work. Your name is Duncan. Alright. Um, so, in addition to declaring arrays like this with a boundary, um, you'll see people doing something like this, where they just make a pointer called name, and then they assign a string literal to the pointer, which sounds very counterintuitive because... Um, you can't really assign, because this is an, addre an address, and you're expecting a pointer to hold an address. And um, the, the way this works is character arrays are different than what you would expect, at least what I would expect anyway. So this, it does point to an address, but you can still assign string literals to it. And that's because basically what happens here is when C++ sees, sees that you're making a pointer and it sees that you're assigning a string literal to it, it goes to an address in memory and then it basically says, I need you to hold, I need this uh, part of your memory to hold this string literal. So then it allocates uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. That's kind of, here, I'll, I'll use like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, blocks of data at that address. So um, it basically does make an array 
but it's just referred to as if it was a pointer. Now you might be thinking, so this works, right? But what happens if we try to assign a new value to this to this pointer? So you might try to change your name to something like, I don't know, Mario. Okay? And then Oops. <laughs> okay, something like that. And so let's see if this works, because this is kind of weird. And in fact, it does work. And um, the way that this works is... So this pointer is stored like this. Okay? In memory, we have D-U-N-C-A-N, -N, and then the null character. I'll just use an underscore to signify the null character. So that's that's what's stored in memory. Now when you change this here in this line, this doesn't become um, Mario null. It doesn't uh, delete Duncan and then put Mario in its place. No, that's not what happens. What instead happens is it keeps Duncan around, and then it just appends Mario at the end and adds another null character. And it basically takes the pointer and it has a point here. So it only points to this data. But this Duncan data is still there. It hasn't gone away. It hasn't been deallocated. It's still there. So you're not actually changing anything here. Basically, it's as if you're declaring a whole new pointer because it doesn't deallocate anything. It, in fact, allocates more when you try to change the name of a character pointer. So that's something really important to keep in mind. I think there was one more thing I was going to say. Um, well, one thing that's important to know is that because of this, we don't have to make this the same length as this. If this was a really long name, like, um, uh, I don't know, let's make this the short name and make this the long name because I'm not creative enough. So this tells um, the compiler that I need you to make space for Mario underscore, Mario null, to be precise. And then when it makes the new, when we do this reassignment, um, we're st we can still assign a longer string literal to our pointer, because all it does is put it on at the end. It doesn't actually have to delete any of this. So keep that in mind as well. Um, okay, so the thing that I was going to talk about is not really important. I think I'm going to talk about it in a different video because it's not really prevalent to character arrays. But what you might be thinking is, what if you don't want it to behave like this? You don't want it to be just adding more and more to this string. I mean, what if we were changing our name uh, several times? What if we didn't even know how many times the character was going to change their name? Maybe we have it as a as a setting, and they can change their name however many times they want. Now, if we let them do that, then we're just going to keep making more and more memory until the computer runs out, which is obviously not what we want to do. So, how can we do? How can we set this up so that instead of just appending this data, it can actually deallocate this, and then after reassignment, it becomes Duncan instead of Mario, it's, instead of Mario Duncan. It actually deletes Mario and adds Duncan in, in, in its place. And the answer to that is something called dynamic memory allocation. And that's what we're going we're gonna to be talking about in the next video. So I'll see you guys there. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.